the primary objective of any and every investment. There are many parameters to measure it in mutual funds or in any other asset class. The primary amongst them is called the CAGR or the Compounded Annual Growth Rate. And what this measures is the mean annual growth over various periods of time. If you have to measure a performance of a fund, for that matter, any investment you've made for three, five, ten year periods, simple annualized return may not be the best measure to give you the true picture. So compounded annual growth rate gives you a better picture because it tells you the rate at which you would have annually grown provided the investment had compounded all the return at the same rate for the subsequent years. Let's say you want to invest in a fund and its performance over the last ten years is somewhat like this graph. As you can see, there are highs and lows the fund has experienced over the years and its NAV has gone from 100 rupees to 250. That's a 150% total gain or absolute return over the last 10 years. So here the simple annualized rate is nothing but 250 minus 100 divided by 10 which is 15%. But it will not be right to assume that you've compounded your money at 15%. If it was a compounded annual growth rate, it would actually not be 250. If it compounded at 15%, the value would have actually grown to 404. So now you see the difference between simple annualized, which takes you to 250, and the compounded annual growth rate takes you to 404. If we now work backwards to find out what is the CAGR return made in this example where the NAV moves from 100 to 250, it would work out to be 9.6%. So the difference between simple annualized return of 15 and CAGR of 9.6 is actually 5.4% and that is not ignorable. Ouch, that's got to hurt. But Firoz, shouldn't all asset classes be measured like this and not just mutual funds? It's true, Sumera. I think all assets and all investment vehicles should be measured in the most mathematical fashion using the CAGR concept. Unfortunately, the seasoned investors as well use a different measure of simple interest or an absolute return for real estate. And when it comes to financial instruments, they see it in the form of compounded annual growth rate. For example, I have a friend of mine who just told me that his house moved from 60 lakhs of value to 3.6 crores and he was very excited. When I actually computed the return for the last 20 years he has stayed invested, it worked out to be 9.4%. Optically, it looked significantly more a 60 lakh rupee becoming 3.6 crore. But the CAGR has a completely different story to say, 9.4% pre-tax. So an important piece of advice for all investors would be to use CAGR as a method to evaluate performance. And to be the devil's advocate, the one limitation that the CAGR method has is that it measures the performance from the beginning to the end and ignores all the volatility that you may have seen in between. Absolute return is another parameter that you can use to gauge the returns from any asset. So it's a point-to-point -point return that tells you the rate at which your asset has either appreciated or depreciated.